I'm going to do a couple of problems that will help with the test that I left out. So the first question is from part one of the review. It's question number 26. And it's taking the derivative of g of x. And g of x is natural log of 4x squared minus 7 to the fifth power. And this is a natural log of a big giant function. So this is a natural log u, and the derivative of a natural log u is just 1 over u, u prime, 1 over u du dx. So we have to, for the derivative, put 1 over u, and u is 4x squared minus 7 raised to the fifth power. And then we have to just multiply by du dx. So the, the derivative of this u part, this is a power to, I mean, a base to a power. So you have to do power in front times the base to the power minus 1, and then times the derivative of this base. And so the derivative of 4x squared minus 7 is 8x. So now um, what happens is this is on top of 1, and so 4 of these bases, 4x squared minus 7, will knock out 4 of these down here. So all four of these knock out four down here, leaving us with just one. So on the top, one times five times eight x is just 40 x. And on the bottom, there's just four x squared minus seven. So um, that's going to be our derivative. And I didn't need to put that parentheses on the binomial in the bottom, since that's all that's left at the bottom. That's the answer to the derivative. Okay, let's look at number 32. 32 is y equals 6x to the fourth e to the negative 3x, and we need to find the second derivative. So first we find the first derivative by using product rule. So we can take the derivative of 6x to the 4 and get 24x cubed. The derivative of e to any power is e to that power times the derivative of the power. I'll just put the negative 3 times in front instead of behind. So the first derivative, I'm going to move it down here, is this product, 6x to the 4 times negative 3 e to the negative 3x, when we multiply, we get negative 18 x to the 4 e to the negative 3x. And then we say plus, and we multiply bottoms up, and we get 24 x to the 3 e to the negative 3x. Now, we could stop here if we wanted the first derivative, but we're supposed to find the second derivative. So to do the second derivative, we're going to have to do product rule on both of these. So the derivative of negative 18 x to the 4 is 4 times negative 18 is negative 72 x to the third. We drop it down a power. The derivative of e to the negative 3 x, we already did that up here, negative 3 e to the negative 3 x. Over here, the derivative of 24 x cubed, 3 times 24 is 72 x to the 2 power. And negative 3e e to the negative 3x is the derivative of e to the negative 3x. So for the second derivative, and again, I probably should allow myself more room. For the second derivative, we're going to multiply down. Negative 18 times negative 3 is positive 54. And I'll just go ahead and put the x's in front of the e to the negative 3x. And then we add on what we get when we multiply up, which is a negative 72, so I'll just put minus 72x3 e to the negative 3x. Then plus, on 
This second term, which is also a product, we have to multiply one direction and get negative 24 times 3 is another 72 and then x3 e to the negative 3x and then multiplying up this way we get positive 72 x squared e to the negative 3x so these two middle terms are like terms and so we can just go ahead and add those together and we get that the second derivative is 54 x to the 4 e to the negative 3x minus 144 x to the 3 e to the negative 3x plus 72 x squared e to the negative 3x. Then there's only one other problem that I left off our review that will be represented on the test and that is from part 2 of the review and on part two of the review, we have number 14 that I did not get to practice. And on number 14, it's a question on if you have a function, h of x, which is x plus 4 over x, how do we find the absolute max and min on the interval from 1 to 3? And so what we need to know is that absolute, well, just max and mins occur either where the derivative is zero or undefined. So we need to find out where's the derivative zero or undefined, and that's how we get critical points. And so absolute max and mins on a set interval, closed interval, will occur either at h of 1, h of 3, or h of wherever the h prime of x is zero or undefined. So we'll have to figure out what those numbers are and see what values we get there because these values, the biggest will be the max, the smallest will be the min. So that's how we get them. So the derivative of x plus 4 over x, we can think of 4 over x is 4 times x to the negative 1. So the derivative of x is 1. And the derivative here, negative 1 times 4 is negative 4 x to the negative 2. So this is 1 minus 4 over x squared. And so if we want to know where is this 0 or undefined for our critical values, we can, um, well, we could just add... 4 over x squared, add it to the other side, and then just cross multiply and get where is x squared equal to 4. And the answer is that's going to be true. If we do the um, square root, we have to do plus minus when x is 2 or when x is negative 2. But we also have to check when is our derivative undefined. So this derivative which is written here. This is undefined whenever the bottom is zero. So this is an, another critical value is that x is zero because that makes the function undefined. So if we're looking for absolute max and mins, it will occur at one of the two endpoints or at one of these critical values. But if we are stuck between one and three, this these two numbers are outside of that um, it, that it, that interval of x from one to three. So negative two is to the left of one, and so is zero. So the only number that we have to check is h of two. So we plug one into the original function because the original function tells us what y is. So y when x is one, we get one plus four over one. 1 plus 4, 5. When we have a 3 for x, we get 3 plus 4 over 3. So 3 plus 1 and 1 third is 4 and 1 third. And h of 2, if you plug in a 2, you get 2 plus 4 over 2, which is 2 plus 2, 4. So the largest of these numbers is y. So the, the biggest y we get is 5. And the smallest of these numbers is the 4. So 4 is going to be our minimum, 
and our maximum is going to be 5. So we have a max at x equals 1, and the max is 5. Max at x equals 1, and the max is 5. And Or we could just say the ordered pair 1, 5 is our, our maximum point, and the ordered pair 2, comma 4 is our minimum, absolute minimum point. So, didn't realize I was off the page there. Sorry about that. So there you have it, number 14. And I think that covers everything, everything we talked about. And if you, um, if you graphed this function on your grapher, you would see that in that little interval that we're from 1 to 3, you, when you graph it, you would get this point, 1, 5, and then the curve comes down and hits a low point at 2, 4, at the point 2, 4, and then it rises up again, and then it stops here at the other end point is 3, and when x is 3, we got that um, y was 4 and a third. And so that's, if you look on your graph or just between 1 and 3, you'll get these three points, and the absolute um, highest value is 5, and that is at the point 1, 5 is the absolute max, and then it bottoms out down here at 2, 4 is the absolute min. The graph starts climbing again, but it never gets higher. It, it stops at 4 and 1 third, so we don't pass up the 5. We never go past Okay, and just you'll be able to ask me questions if you are confused on any of this. Good luck. Bye-bye.